All right, so since people asked and since it's the end of the semester, I thought I would just do a quick video explaining how the tracker that we've installed on the website works. So how does the software work that tries to ensure that you are watching the videos, I'm sure with limited success. And many people have pointed out there's a bunch of different ways to break this, but I thought it's kind of fun to talk about. Um, the main reason is it's a nice example of how you can use existing web technologies to kind of do new things. So uh, the starting point for this is the YouTube player. So we're serving videos from YouTube. Uh, we're embedding them on the page. And when you do that, you get an iframe that's used by YouTube to serve the content, but that iframe actually has an API. So the iframe has an interface that allows you to retrieve various information about the player, it allows you to change videos, allows you to determine what time the video is at, and that's totally 100% necessary in order for this to work. If they, YouTube didn't support this, there'd be no way to build a tracker like this because you know the video would just be embedded and I'd have no idea what was going on inside the video, what you were doing, skipping around or whatever. All right, so this is, this is the starting point. I'm not gonna go over this, but this is very interesting. Um, and this describes exactly what the API is, what the interface faces that this particular YouTube player supports. So uh, with that in mind, what happens when the page is loaded is we create a new iframe to load the video into, and then we load the video, and when the video begins to play, um, so this is the place where we actually um, create the uh, YouTube player, and this is all just sort of you know code that, that you can find on their website. Um, this is, you know, this basically says uh, autoplay if possible. That means it will start playing automatically. Modest branding, I guess that means that they make the YouTube logo a little bit smaller. Anyway, so what happens is when um, the player begins to play, when the player is loaded, it calls this on player ready callback. Um, and what that does is it actually launches the video tracker. So uh, what it does is says, if I'm tracking the video, now once you've seen a video one time and you go back to review it, the tracker is disabled and so the, none of this code runs. But if I'm tracking this particular video, then I call this track video function. That track video function is located in a different um, file here. This is all sort of mixed together um, when, uh, when the page is loaded. And, and what the track video um, tool does is it adds, a, so this is interesting, it adds a listener for changes to the player state. So what it does is it tracks um, if you uh, skip, that results in several changes to the player state. If you pause the video, if you do things like, um, well actually mute doesn't generate any changes to the player state, but anyway, so this generates a listener to the player state, um, and when, and what it will do is when that state changes, it'll call, oop, uh, on player state change. I know this is all sort of complicated, uh, but we'll get to the simple part in a sec. Um, so what this does is if, if, the, if it's not plain, right, so event.data holds an integer that, that uh, reflects what's going on. So if event.data is one, it means that the video started to play. When the video starts to play, this, this function sets a timer. And it's really that timer that does all the work. So this timer is set to fire every second and every second the timer fires and essentially checks things about the video state. Uh, so when the timer fires, it calls this check time function. And this is the function that really does all the work. So, um, and I won't go through this in detail, but what the check time function does is it, uh, it, it tries to uh, determine a couple of different things. So it checks if the, if the video is muted at that point. Um, it checks if the video is playing too fast. It essentially does that by recording a couple timestamps and then averaging across them and trying to figure out, you know, if you've seen, if the video has advanced 10 seconds but only five seconds of wall clock time have gone by, then you're playing the video a little bit too fast. And you might notice if you play the video fast, it takes the tracker a little bit longer to actually realize what you're doing. So it checks to determine that you're uh, playing the video at the right speed. It checks to make sure that the video is not muted. Um, it, it has a, there's some visibility code here that I found on uh, Stack Overflow somewhere that checks to make sure that the tab is on top. Um, and it also tracks what parts of the video you see. So essentially it bins the video time into these intervals and it makes sure that you're watching the video uh, forward in order. So that's how we detect if you skip ahead and you've missed an earlier part of the video. Um, if this happens, what it does is it 
itself uh, calls a callback called video problem. And video problem pauses the video and then generates this modal that you might have seen that explains what the problem is. So, you know, it sets some text, you muted the video, leave the audio enabled, whatever, you're watching the video too fast, and then it generates that modal that pops up um, and causes you to have to start over. If this doesn't happen, once you get to the end, and this is, this is quite simple, all it does here is it generates a post to this particular API that the, that the internetclass.org website supports. So it essentially says, okay, this is complete. Um, and, it, and then uh, it will, let's see, I think there is, okay, yeah, so it posts info. Info is a JSON blob. So essentially posts a little bit of information to this API. When that API is hit with information that's in the right format, it'll mark the video as complete, and then you can go on. So this is all, all there is to it. I mean, it, it may look slightly complicated, uh, probably just because I haven't cleaned it up very well or commented anything. Um, but the fundamental uh, uh, sort of logic here is quite simple. Start a timer and then periodically check the video state, look for various problems that we've identified, like you muted the video and complain about those problems if they exist. If they don't exist and you get to the end of the video, send a little bit, send a post request. We're using Ajax here, so we're using the jQuery post function uh, to an API in the back end that marks that, that you've completed that video and then adjust state on the back end so that you can proceed. That's all there is to it.